Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Python on-ramp. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to do for loops, while loops, and if statements in Python. So our first basic example is we're going to print the numbers starting from zero, going up to, but not including three. And the, uh, the syntax for this in Python is for i in range three, colon, print i. So you start with four, then you specify the variable, then you specify where the variable is going to go through, where it's going to iterate through, and range three, by default, if you don't specify anything else, is the numbers starting at zero, going up to, but not including three. A nice feature about this is that you don't have to manually end the for loop. And then it, as soon as you stop indenting, then uh, the loop ends automatically. So notice that this line here is automatically outside the for loop because we're not indenting and therefore it only printed once. Also again, the colon, very important. So now let's do another example. Let's say x equals zero. Let's say for i in range three, print i equals plus stra of i. And I'm gonna say x is equal to x plus i. And then I'm gonna print x equals plus stra of x. Remember from last before that um, this is how you concatenate a string with the string version of x. And so we loop through this. We start off with x equal to zero, then i is equal to zero. Uh, we print i equals zero. Then we add zero to x, so x is still equal to zero. Then we set i equal to one. We add one to x, so now x is equal to one. Then i is equal to two. We add one, we add two to x. X is one plus two, which is three. Now, if you don't want to start from other zeros, the syntax is a little bit different, but it's not so different. So you say four i in range. So far, this is still the same. And if I want to start at five and go up to, but not including eight, I say for i in range five, eight. And then again, I put a colon. And then I can print i. And so this is going to print 5, 6, 7. But then it does not include 8. You can also count by numbers other than 1. So for example, if I want to count for 10, I say for i in range. And now I'm going to list three numbers. And when I say I'm going to go from 0 to 50, not including 50, count by 10s. So you have the start, the stop, but the stop is not included, and then how much you're counting by. So this is going to print 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, but not 50. And if you really want to, you can even count backwards. So to do that, I can say for i in range, 10, 0, negative 1. So this means I'm going to be counting by negative one. I'm counting backwards. So I'm going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I don't include the zero. Last example on for loops is going to be a word problem. Suppose I start the day with $100 and I earn $7.50 each hour. How much money will I have after five hours? So I'm going to say amount equals 100. I'm going to say for i in range 5, because we're going to do five iterations. Amount equals amount plus 7.5. And then I'm going to look at the amount. And we can see that at the end of this, I have $137.50. So that's what we're going to do on for loops. Now moving on to a different contract for while loops. So while loops are really useful for when you don't know how many iterations you need, or it's not obvious. 
So now in this question, I'll say I start the day with $100. I earn $7.50 I earn seven dollars and fifty cents per hour. How long will it take until I have at least 200 hours? So I'm going to say amount is equal to 100. And I'll set time equal to zero. And I'm going to say while amount is less than 200, amount equals amount plus 7.5. I'm just going to print out the amount just to make this a little bit easier to follow. And then I'm going to say time equals time plus one. And then after the while loop, where to end the while loop, I can just unindent. I'm going to print out the time. So we see that my fortune was $1.07, was $107.50, $115, $122.50, $130, $140, $150, $160, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170, $170
and then we stopped. So break can be good if you want to be able to end a while loop or a for loop early, depending on the, on the values of certain variables. So that's it for this video. I will see you again next time.